Hi, I'm Ben Canning, and this lecture is on velocity and distance while in free fall. So we're going to be looking at uh, how velocity behaves and how distance behaves when something is in free fall. Uh, hopefully you've already watched uh, the video on what free fall is. If you haven't, go back and watch that, and then you can come back to this one. As always, three or more bullet points worth of notes, do a one to two sentence summary, and any follow-up questions. So we talked before this idea that free fall is when there is no force acting on something other than the force due to gravity. So in other words, something is falling freely. There's no air resistance, there's no wings, there's no uh, friction, there's no parachute, there's no hand holding it up or string holding it, it's just falling and purely due to gravity. Well, on Earth, gravity causes velocity to change by 9.8 meters per second each second. And that's when it's in free fall. We'll often round this to 10 for simplicity, just so that it's easier to kind of see the approximate. But if you're ever doing a calculation in an actual equation, you should be using 9.8. So here we can see what this means is if uh, on Earth, uh, gravity causes velocity to change by 9.8, or let's say 10 meters per second each second, then that means when we let go of something with a velocity of zero, after one second, it'll be traveling 10 meters per second. After two seconds of falling, it'll be traveling 20 meters per second. And after three seconds of falling, it'll be traveling 30 meters per second. And after four seconds, it'll be traveling 40 meters per second. So in other words, it's accelerating at a rate of 9.8 meters per second squared, or in this case, we used 10 to show it. And this is true for everything near the surface of the Earth. Um, and by surface, basically just imagine anything in the realm where people can go without needing like an astronaut or spacesuit. Um, if you're needing a spacesuit of some sort, then you're likely getting far enough from Earth that this is going to diminish a little bit. But even on top of Everest, the, the value of gravity is like 9.78 or something like that. It doesn't reduce very much. Um, if you're going up in an airplane, like a typical airplane, it's still going to be in the realm of 9.8. It might drop down to 9.7. I'll have to take a look at that at some point. Um, but for the most part, we stay in a realm where it stays 9.8. And this means regardless of whether something's light or heavy, this is the acceleration gravity applies to it. However, a lot of times we see air resistance playing a factor, and that's why we don't see everything fall at the same rate. Uh, here's a quick example of uh, what that would look like if we were using 9.8 instead of 10. So we can see it's basically the same values, but we're just uh, a little bit more precise with it. Now, because the acceleration due to gravity is so common and so commonly used for different things, we actually give it its own letter, kind of like how pi is such a common uh, number, 3.14, etc., um, for dealing with circles that they gave it its own little variable or notation, hence pi. Um, or there might be other things like a dozen is just represented as a dozen, etc. So here we've got this idea, we use this number so much, we actually give it its own variable g, which represents the acceleration due to gravity, not the force, but the acceleration due to gravity, and a value of 9.8 meters per second squared. However, in IB, we're often going to use uh, 9.81, or not often, we will use 9.81. So if you'd like to use 9.81 this year, feel free. Um, but for the most part, I think most textbooks just use 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, so the acceleration due to gravity represented by the variable lowercase g, the units are meters per second squared because it's just a very specific uh, a, a value of acceleration. You can write those units in either of those ways. Um, and basically what this means is any time we are solving um, for something that is accelerating due to gravity, we can just plug in this value for g in the place of acceleration. So anywhere we see a in an equation, we can plug in g if we know that the only acceleration is due to gravity. So that means in equations like this one, where v equals u plus a times t, or in other words, final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time, if we know something is only accelerating because it's falling, we can just plug in g instead of uh, the acceleration, and then that becomes basically what's happening for something in free fall. Uh, whether or not you report out g as uh, the given info or you say the acceleration a is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared, both are fine as long as you're showing your uh, given info in some way, shape, or form.
Now keep in mind, gravity is always directed downwards, so you need to be conscious of whether or not you are uh, choosing the downward direction to be positive or negative. Uh, if downward or if up is positive, then gravity is negative 9.8. If down is positive, then obviously gravity is just 9.8. So again, just pay attention to direction on things to make sure you are consistent. So let's do a little practice problem where we're going to figure out the velocity of something um, over a period of time. So we have somebody who throws a baseball straight up into the air um, with an initial velocity of 30 meters per second. We're going to assume gravity is 10 to make life easier in this case. And we're going to ignore air resistance. That tells us it's in free fall. If we said you couldn't ignore air resistance, then you would need to account for it, which means it wouldn't be in free fall and we couldn't do this equation. Um, or if something actually just says it's in free fall, then you can just assume it's in free fall. So we're going to calculate the velocity of the baseball at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 seconds. So let's do a quick little practice math on that. Given info was that the initial velocity was 30. Gravity is going to be negative 10 because it's downward and the ball was thrown upward. So we need to make sure those are opposite signs. Um, we can put the initial velocity in there. That's the velocity at time of uh, zero seconds. Um, and we're going to be trying to calculate the velocity after one second. So uh, our unknown is the velocity. We plug into that equation v equals u plus a times t. And what we get is 20 meters per second as our new velocity. So we'd write that in the table and then plug back in and solve again for two seconds. Now notice that if we plug back in, we are still using 30 as our initial velocity because that's the initial velocity when time began. Uh, if you were wanting to, uh, if you tweaked it in some way, shape, or form and used 20 as the initial velocity, you'd be making some different assumptions. So uh, don't do that unless you can track all those different assumptions all the way through. I'm not going to talk more about it because I just want you to focus on really only using the initial velocity of when it was time zero or the beginning. So we solve this all out and we can see that the velocity changes by 10 meters per second each second. And here what we can also see is that the ball went up for a period of time. It was slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. And at the very top of its path, it stopped for a brief moment. Its velocity was zero as it went from going up to going down. And then it began to pick up speed in the opposite direction. Now, another thing to note is that on either side of the kind of peak, there's kind of a symmetry here. Which really brings us to, uh, if we were to plot it, we would get a, um, uh, a straight line um, crossing the origin um, and there would be some symmetry around it. The other part to, to kind of uh, re-up um, the idea that this is going to be a straight line that we've kind of seen before, a more linear equation, um, is that we can see that this really does mimic the y equals mx plus b format. I've just moved the b around so it really matches it, where g or the value of gravity is going to be our slope, time is our x value, um, v or the velocity is our y value, and then the initial velocity is going to be our b value in this case. And so what that would look like in different graphs would be something like this, where if something was dropped and it was picking up speed, we would always see that the slope was 9.8 on a velocity graph. And that's because the acceleration of anything in free fall is always 9.8. And so that literally tells us the acceleration. And so the slope is due to gravity. If instead we thought uh, down was negative, then we would see it go like this. Um, again, showing the same thing, just flipping the direction to show whether positive is up or positive is down. Um, and we can see that if something was thrown with an initial velocity upwards, um, we would see uh, the graph cross the x-axis, where that zero point is where it stops for a brief moment and switches direction. So it's a little weird to interpret these graphs as a switch in direction. Again, more on that in a, a next episode more deeply. Um, but we can see that it goes from negative 4. It's increasing. Uh, sorry, it's slowing down. And then here it's beginning to speed up in the opposite direction is what's going on. And depending on whether we called up positive or up negative just depends on what our slope or how it looks is. All right, so in free fall, we said things pick up speed as they fall downwards. This means that things will fall further and further each second. So we've looked at velocity, now we're switching gears into position. So if you look at this nice kind of snapshot diagram or stroboscopic uh, photography here, um, we can see that as the person falls, 
uh, their distance that they cover each second or really probably each like 0.1 seconds in this case is increasing where how far they fall in the very beginning is much different than how far they fall at the very end. So what that means is we're going to be looking at just like with our uh, distance while accelerating equation, we're going to be looking at something very similar. In fact, it's actually the exact same equation. The only difference is we're going to plug in G for our acceleration because we know the acceleration will be 9.8 meters per second squared. So for distance fallen and free fall, it's literally the same equation. Um, we just, again, plug in the value of G. You don't need to actually rewrite this equation as a new equation. You can always just write it like this and just say that acceleration equals G or equals 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, there's a couple scenarios where maybe you have like an initial height. So we looked at uh, our uh, person jumping off the helicopter there. They maybe had like an initial height of 50 meters and then they were falling down towards the ground where gravity would be negative. You could actually rewrite this equation or add in an initial height portion in here. Basically just adding your initial distance, your starting point, your head start to what we were using as a previous equation um, as a more generic form. So just a heads up with that. When we do this, the distance really becomes more of a position as opposed to distance in this case. So if we wanted to take a look at what these graphs might look like, we would see, again, kind of a quadratic uh, curve or parabola in this case. If that initial distance was zero, then it would start at the origin. However, if we had something starting uh, at like five and then going from there, we would just be shifting our graph up. And so that's where that's coming into play. If instead we had something falling, we might say, oh, it's starting up at a distance or height of 50 meters, but gravity is uh, downwards or negative, and so it's going closer and closer down to uh, ground floor or zero distance above the, the ground. So here again, distance is really behaving a little bit more like a position instead of distance in this case. Um, so graphing it, uh, let's imagine we are graphing position versus time for a rock thrown straight up with a velocity of 30 meters per second. To do this, we would, just like before, just be plugging into this d equals ut plus 1 half at squared. Our initial position was zero, so starting from uh, kind of ground level. We have 30 um, as our initial velocity, uh, and we have gravity as negative 10 because the initial velocity was upwards, and gravity is going to be downwards. Um, and so we'd plug that in, and we'd solve. And if we do this over and over and over again, what we can see is we get that nice parabolic curve where just like with velocity, there's some symmetry um, around where things are if you look at the kind of peak point and then look left or right of that peak point. That's it for this one. Three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and please do your follow-up questions on Google Forms.